Okay, once you're in the interior, to remove the shocks or lower them down in my case. In my case, you just want to remove this cover from here. And you have access to both your bolts down there. One on this side and then one on this side. And they're both 14 millimeters, so we're going to loosen them up now. After you've removed uh, the strut nuts, we're going to remove these sway bar brackets they're at 12 millimeter so we're gonna do that now there's two on each side once you've removed uh this bolt from inside here your strut will now come down and you're gonna slide it in through here and then out this way and now your struts out on this side so we can move on to access one of the subframe bolts which is located right behind there you have to move this out of the way or you can't get to the bolt. It's impossible. So something to take into account. So we may need to move this to access that. So we're going to remove the 10 millimeter bolt that hold this assembly up there and then go from there. So once you loosen these bolts up for the charcoal canister, you can easily access this bolt with a swivel socket or just a straight and pry this back and you'll have more than enough room to get the bolt off of the subframe. So now we can remove this subframe bolt, get it down so that we can get those bolts in. So that's what we're gonna do right now. So here's our two subframe bolts throughout. So we're gonna be using our 1.25 spacer, M12 spacers. With our M12 bolts, everything is in the instructions that you need to know. So at this point, we will require a pry bar or lower this down slightly. Okay, get our bolt in. We just want to get it started. Okay, that's it. Now we do the other side as well. You gotta get a pry bar in here. Pry down on the body. We do that. Same idea, get your bolt through here. There you go. Same idea. If it doesn't want to go on, put tension with a pry bar so you get it to, to line up so you can get everything to screw in. And now, I would definitely go by hand to get this started, because you do not want to strip these bolts. So just your gun, just snug. Same thing here. Okay, so next step is we want to shim this up. Okay, so the place where you're going to put these spacers for your charcoal cancer canister is this one here and the one on the far side. Whereas this one here for the charcoal canister is attached to the subframe, so it's going to naturally lower with the rest of it. So that's what we're going to do right now. It's going to be hard to show you guys. Here are your spacers installed. One. You don't need one here, but you do need one up in, in there. Do you see that spacer there? Right there. There's a spacer right there that I installed. You also, it does not note, you need to remove the washers off of the old bolts 
hammer them off the old bolts and hammer them onto the new bolts or they'll just slide right through the bushing. So make note of that or you can't do it. So let's continue on. Okay. Right now we can replace this upper arm. So we remove this right here. It's just the clips holding it in back here. You just depress these, snap this down, loosen these two bolts and remove this upper arm. So let's discuss the fact that people in non-rusty states or Canada will not have to deal with any of this rust. To remove this bolt, it's easier if you take out this sensor uh, clip because it gives you access to here if you want to try and get an impact with a swivel, which was very difficult. I would just do it by hand with a long extension bar. I had to do it the whole way like that. So now what we're going to do is take our arm to our bench. We take our arm to our bench, get our new arm, which has a new nut for some reason. Don't know why. Okay. And we're going to adjust it to the same length as our old one. So this nut is obviously to replace the fact that the factory one has a nut on this side, so you're going to put this on that side. So first thing you're going to do is just loosen out our arms until we get roughly the same length. Slightly a little more. Okay. Okay, so that's roughly exactly the same measurement, give or take. Obviously, an alignment shop is going to make that better. So, this is to just replicate this here. So, we want it on this side, let's say. It's going to be like so, like this. So we just tighten up these nuts roughly where we want them. Okay, and now we can reinstall this piece on the vehicle. So we'll do that now. Once you have your strut bolt back in here and you've positioned this strut up in the top and tightened it down. Oh. Hmm. As we can see, we have a little bit of an issue. We need to chop off the top of these studs or they're gonna tighten down on each other. So we're gonna do that right now. Scratch that. As you can see very closely, these do not actually touch on the three inch kit. But if you have a bigger kit, a smaller height, you can see. But anyways, it doesn't touch. It's a millimeter, two millimeters away. So now we can move on to replacing this here. So we're just going to be removing these rear control bar bolts right here and putting two shims inside of here. As you can see, we now have our shims here in the lower control arms, which are they're called trailer arm bushings actually. We got our shims in the charcoal canister. We got our two and a half, two inch lift plate for the shock. We got our adjustable camber arm and this plate here, you can adjust to depending on what side these are on because they're not specific. These bolts are loose, this bolt's loose, and that bolt needs to be loose. And then once you put the vehicle on the ground and you roll it back and forth, you can put tension on the suspension again and tighten those up to torque spec. Okay, so now we can officially put this back, our e-brake cable. There's an actual adjustment for this. I'll show you that right now. Pretty much, it goes like this. Assuming it tightens up like that. And this will tighten here, because it can't reach. So it'll go like this. This one goes in like so, the stock one. I gotta say I'm really disappointed with Milwaukee. The tools aren't as good as I thought. Okay. 
No, this nut comes through like so. Let me see, does this want to go behind? Or in front? It doesn't really matter. Let's just call it once the tension's alleviated from it. Wow, I'm, this might not be enough. So you gotta put it in a position where it's in the least amount of tension. So I think like that. Still a little loose. So that's your adjustment part for that. So now we're completely done. We can alleviate the jack back down. And then later we'll torque everything up. One more thing has to go back in place. Just remember, if you don't take these out on the three inch kit, I don't think you can do it. Top tip. If you find yourself in a position where the shock bolt is seized and you can't remove the shock to put this top mat on, loosen these two bolts, loosen that, and drop the whole control arm down. And try to keep, uh, and then mount your piece on, slide it back on, and disassemble, uh, reassemble everything. Technically, we should be replacing the shock if the blower is seized, but the customer doesn't want that at this time, so we're gonna have to do it this way. Let's see if it works. Reiterate, so now you're putting this back up like this. It's still connected. The caliper, remove the caliper, slide it over here and hang it. Remove those two bolts, remove that bolt. Sway bar is disconnected. Obviously this is disconnected. We're gonna be removing this arm next and I'm gonna remove it before I put this back in. Just makes it a lot easier. And then we're gonna slide this whole assembly back up. Once you've uh, assembled all the bolts, mark every bolt. Now we don't know if the if anything moves. This is why I do it. Okay. So you know these aren't gonna be tight until you move everything, but just give it a mark. Same thing here. Okay. Same thing in here. Right underneath. Mark the same bolts on the other side. You're gonna tighten this bolt once you figure out, once you put the vehicle on the ground. Uh, I gotta tighten this one here. Still, we'll put a mark there. And now we'll mark the inside of the vehicle. Cause we just tightened up the struts. We're gonna put our caps back on. Same idea. Just put a mark the bolts. Put the covers back on. You're done in the inside. Mark the other side. Put the covers back on. These are 33 foot pounds for anyone interested. The final step is the differential spacer, okay? So it's located right there. As you can see, I already put the spacer in. So you just gotta support the differential with a jack, like so. Remove the bolt and washer that are here all the way down. Lower the jack down slightly so you can slide your shim in. And then you just insert the new bolt that it comes with, specific to your vehicle, and tighten it up. And that's it. And now you do the other side and you're completely done. Then we can settle the vehicle on the ground and torque all the suspension bolts once the vehicle is settled. Okay, so now that everything is done, we can see that the camber, I have all the weight off of the 
I have tension on the vehicle like if it was riding on the ground right now. It's off, the weight is all off of my lift. So when I put my, excuse me, when I put my level here, you can clearly see that the vehicle is towed, is cambered out. So we can make a camber adjustment here just to get it pretty level. So at the alignment shop, there's less correction. So we'll do that now. And then we can tighten all the suspension bolts while it's loaded. So this one, that one right there, this one here, which is a toe adjustment, but we can still tighten it up until the alignment shop goes. And this one here, and this one here. We'll tighten all those bolts up once I adjust this camber. Okay, so if you want to take a look at my level now, look where my bubble is. It's almost centered. So, watch as I make an adjustment on it. If I just turn the arm, watch how the bubble changes. So you can make your adjustment like this and get it as close as possible. And you do that by loosening these two and adjusting this arm. So that's how it's done, okay? So now we can tighten up these two nuts. And for now, the alignment is decent as far as camber is concerned. And here's your CRV ride height after the three inch lift. All you have to do now is torque the wheels and get in alignment. I adjusted the front toe just so that it's not horrible going to the alignment shop. As you can see, it's still towed out a bit. See, it's still towed out a bit. It also has camber adjustment in the front. It has cam The rear actually looks pretty good. I think I got that one. Maybe it's towed out a bit. That can be adjusted at the alignment shop. The rear there maybe looks like it's towed in slightly, but other than that, the camber looks great. I don't like the camber in the front like this, but there's only so much adjustment as alignment bolts had without getting a lower ball joint that's adjustable that can rotate on an axis and push this out. There's no way to really get it fine-tuned. Other than that, it's complete. Everything's torqued. Gotta road test it and make sure there's nothing going on. Other than that, have a good day.